Hey guys, it's John. I got a, a bunch of stuff on this table because this is gonna has to do with the uh, my next big big project. So one of the problems I have is that uh, I live in a pretty big house. Uh, the problem is that I don't have good good enough Wi-Fi reception, and the uh, I'm running an Apple router right now, which is which are pretty good, and. Um, but it only covers, it covers the middle of the house pretty good, but these ends of the house are pretty weak. Now there's a couple things you can use uh, if you want to go a cheap route. You can buy these things. This is a, a Wi-Fi extender that uses um, your power, uh, your, your outlets in your house. It's an Ethernet over power line. And the best thing about this is it has a outlet pass-through so that you can plug it into your outlet. It does take up both plugs in the outlet because of its size, but it does give you an outlet to use. Uh, one thing about these is you never want to use this in a power strip. You don't, you don't want to plug a power strip in the wall and then plug this into the power strip. The power strip can, uh, creates too much interference and it makes it really difficult for the ethernet to connect. Now one thing, I've, one thing I've noticed about these is that you can, they usually come, they come in a, in a, in a pair. Uh, one of them you put it in the outlet nearest to your router and then you connect the ethernet on that, uh, out, that extender to your router and then the second one you plug into another place throughout your house, really any outlet, as long as it's in the same breaker box, doesn't have to be the same circuit, or it doesn't have to be the same breaker, but it has to be in the same breaker box. If you have multiple breaker boxes, they won't, uh, they won't connect to each other because each breaker box comes off of its own connection off of your main feed into the house. So, the problem is, is that these are really um, vulnerable to interference. If you put it on the same circuit that has a, like say a microwave, and every time you run that microwave, you'll greatly reduce your um, connect connectivity over your power line. Um, I noticed in my office, I can have one connected right here behind this monitor and then the second one in the outlet right here and the connectivity there's three there's three lights on here one is power the other is ethernet which is this connection here and the third is the ethernet connectivity over your power line and if it's red it has no connectivity to the other adapter if it's orange it has connectivity but it's reduced because of interference or if it's green it has full connectivity uh, these things are now, this one here is a gigabit, so you can do gigabit over power line. But uh, I can have this, like I said, I can have one connected to the one in the monitor and one connected right here, and it comes up orange. I can have one connected right here behind this monitor and the other one up in my attic, and it comes up green. So if you're going to use these, your best bet is to run around. Um, you don't have to do any kind of encryption if you don't want to. These do uh, allow for encryption. There's a, bottom on, a button on the bottom that enables encryption. And the encryption is a self-generated key for each pair. So if I have one connected behind this monitor and I connect a, a second one here in this outlet here and, and do it encrypted, they will connect and have their own key. If I add a third adapter like up in my attic and press the button, they will connect to the one behind the monitor, that one will, and it will create a separate key. So there'll be different keys. Uh, they're not really vulnerable to attack or um, if somebody breaks in, unless somebody walks up and connects directly uh, into an outlet that's in your house, uh, maybe an outlet on the outside. So if you've got some guy parked in your front yard that's got an ethernet cable run to an outlet in your house, you've probably got a problem. Um, they're, they, they will use, um, they're not Wi-Fi, but that encryption they'll use between each set. So, and like I said, unless you've got some guy sitting in your front yard 
connected uh, to your house, you really don't need the um, encryption. Now, if you're setting this up in an office, yeah, you might want to use encryption if it's a company and you've got proprietary information on it. You could encrypt them. Um, they're great if you don't have a means of getting cable to one, from one side to the other side of your house. Um, this setup I have here is I'm planning on installing two Wi-Fi access points to get, to get greater reliability of my Wi-Fi connections on both sides of the house. Right now, if my house is this big, my Wi-Fi propagation uh, footprint is like right on the outside of both sides of the house. In Wi-Fi, the farther you are on the outside of that footprint, the less data rate or speed that you get. Uh, so you don't you don't get the full bandwidth that uh, the Wi-Fi is affording you the farther out you get on the edge. So what you want to do is you want to have a footprint and then you want to have overlapping footprints whichever way your house is so that you can encompass more area in your house and have the same speed. Uh, these allow you to expand that, that network if you can get the speed. Now this thing says it's a gigabit, but it's not. Uh, you only get probably less, a little less than half of the speed. So this is supposed to be one gigabit or a thousand megabits or a billion bits per second. But you're only going to get between four and five hundred with this one. Uh, that's because you're limited to the, the power lines. And the, how it works is that the power is generated over 60 hertz on the power line. This utilizes different frequencies that can be used over those power lines to transmit the data back and forth and not interfere with your power. The problem is, depending on what's running on that power, it can interfere with the other, with the data. So, this is an option. Another option is to run cable. Just run a cable from your router, run it up through the wall, install a wall jack. I mean, you can look at professional, you can just poke a hole in the ceiling and running into, run it in the attic, hide it with some conduit or something like that, and that'll help you get your cable out. Uh, what I plan on doing is I plan on running one cable into my attic and then using power over Ethernet to run power to these wireless access points. These are made by a company called Ubiquity, and I have nothing bad to say with them uh, about them. I think they're the best you can buy. They can be a little pricey sometimes. Um, you can buy wireless access points from Netgear and Cisco or um, Linksys or D-Link or some of these other companies. But these are, I've never had a problem with them. They're reliable, they're dependable, and uh, they've never failed on me. Now how these work is, I'm just gonna pull this out. Now if I had, if you really wanna go all out, you can buy the Ubiquity access points and you can buy the Ubiquity PoE switch to go with it. It's a little more expensive. The, different, the difference between Ubiquity and others is Ubiquity uses passive 24 volts power over Ethernet. The problem with that is not many PoE switches use passive. Most of them are straight 48 volts or 24 volts. Um, but there are a few rare ones. I'll show you in a minute, but um, you can either buy a switch, but when you buy these, you don't need a switch. They come with a adapter for if you got a drop ceiling, that's what this is for. You connect this on the other end, and then the, uh, this is your mount. This would go on one side of the drop ceiling, and then the mount would go uh, up in here, and then you could just screw the, the access point right into it. I'm going to be mounting mine directly onto a drywall ceiling and all it has is four holes 
And just like anything else, it uses little anchors and screws into the drywall. And once you get it mounted into the drywall, all, all, of, all anybody would ever see, once it gets up, you just turn it and it snaps into place. And that's all you see on the ceiling. Has a little light in here that uh, will show you uh, what its status is. I think it's blue when everything is running good. These are 802.11ac uh, 5 dual. They are uh, dual channel 5 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, running at uh, 1.187 megabits per second. So they're really good, and I have a cable here, and I'm going to show you how they work. Get some of this stuff out of the way. So I have one of these. This is a Netgear Pro or Netgear Plus switch. It is a ProSafe 16 port PoE switch, eight ports. Uh, let's see if I got it upside down. Yeah. Eight ports are PoE, that's the yellow ones, and eight ports are not. They're just uh, gig gigabit Ethernet. So if I plug this in, it is, uh, I think this thing can be managed, but if you don't manage it, it's just a dumb switch. It'll do exactly what you tell it to do. Um, it'll, it'll pass traffic in a single, like a single broadcast domain, single VLAN type situation. So, if I take my access point, I have an Ethernet cable. It doesn't come with one. One thing it does come with, it comes with a 24 volt passive PoE injector. If you don't have a PoE switch, you use this. I'll show you this real quick. This allows you, let me get this off. You mount this onto the wall and then this goes in, snaps into place. You can mount it. I mean, if you're putting them up in the attic, you can mount them onto a, um, a roof joist or a ceiling joist or something like that. This outlet, this has a comes with a plug. Plugs in here, goes into a power strip that you can have on the wall. These can use power strip. And you have two connections here, LAN and PoE. Excuse me. LAN would go into your switch. PoE would come out and go into the access point. But, if you have a PoE switch and you're not sure, the quickest way to find out whether it works or not is to take the Ethernet cable. Uh, these are all Cat5e. Uh, that's Cat5. This is Cat5e uh, thin cable. It's really, see, I don't know if you can see the difference. This is a really thin, this blue is a really thin cable. And it's really flexible. But it's Cat5e, twisted pair. Um, no use going to cap six unless you're going to run 10 gigabit in your house. I don't know anybody who's doing that. The only thing bad about cat six is after I think um, I think about 150 feet, your uh, you start losing your speed and you end up going you end up being down to a gig anyhow. This is cat 5 e good 100 meters, 300 feet, 300, 328 feet, guaranteed to give you a gig all the way through. So. Plug this in into one of the PoE switches or the PoE port, and then I can take this, take off my little adapter, it's a little, um, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little Ethernet connection there, and there's a reset, so if you need to reset it back to factory defaults, stick it in here. Give it a minute. You should see it start to light up. So now it's got a white light. I don't know if you can see that or not. Now it's got a white light on it. It'll start to blink. And that's usually the initialization process. And once it's done, 
can take your phone. I'm using my phone to record. So, once that white light's done blinking, it's done initializing, there's an app you can bring up on your cell phone and you can start setting it up, or you can set up an app on your computer, Mac or Windows. It's a ubiquity app. It'll search the network for any devices it sees. Of course, this switch, this switch doesn't have an uplink port to my network yet. Um, once I have that done, it'll be seen by the app. If it's not seen by the app, the app on your phone should see it as a Wi-Fi device. Um, I don't think it'll be set up for any kind of internet or anything. But your best bet is use the computer, get it set up on the app on your computer, get it to join your network. Uh, what I do with all my access points is I use the same password and same uh, SSID. And then no matter where I walk around, my... Uh, my devices, like my portable devices, phones or anything like that, will move to whichever has the strongest single signal as I move around. So as you can see, one cable, I got power. This thing is ready to go. It'll just be sitting under the ceiling like that. That's all anybody will see. And then all you need to do in the ceiling is few, a few holes to mount the uh, mount and then one hole to send the Ethernet cable through. Um, now, you can go out and buy a box of a thousand feet ca a foot cable, a bunch of RJ45s and a crimper, and then run cables exactly the length that you need. These are 100 foot um, Cat5e, already terminated, and they are um, I paid, I think a little, I think I paid like $7 each for these. It'll cost you, uh, I bought five, I think, yeah, five of these. And it was like 35 bucks. So I think, I think a box of 1,000 foot Cat 5e is, is like 40, 40 or 50 bucks. So, you know, why not, why not buy them already terminated? Whatever you don't use, leave it spooled up right above the access point up in the ceiling. You don't need to worry about having extra cable. As long as it doesn't exceed the length of Ethernet cable for that particular con connection, you're good. You don't have to worry about it. So, this is my next project. Um, I could, if I was going to use those injectors, which I was going to do, I have this little Asus gigabit switch. It's an 8-port switch. I was going to mount this up in my attic. I was going to put these uh, 24 volt passive ubiquity um, injectors and then run the cable to the two access points and then use my uh, ethernet over power line to get it down to here. My problem is reliability with ethernet over power line and my other problem is I don't want all this stuff plugged in up in my attic. So I'm gonna place this switch up on top of the cabinets here in my office and then I'm going to in this corner in the ceiling is my uh, I have a second floor to this house but luckily in this corner I have access to the attic on one side of the house the second floor actually the edge of the second floor actually is about maybe 75 percent of my office but the other maybe about 80%, but the other 20% is open to the attic. There's an attic space up there. So as long as I can get a main uh, cable from this switch up into that attic, then I can run to the two access points. So I'll, I'll only have to do two connections. Now this this switch is actually runs really cool. It, it doesn't run hot at all. But Oklahoma gets temperatures 110, 115 degrees sometimes in the summer. I would rather not have this, any kind of electronics running up in the attic that, um, that could overheat, especially in that kind of temperature. And, and, you know, attic gets pretty hot. And I don't have controlled, any kind of controlled environment up there. There is a closet up there, but I've got no power going to it. So uh, um, I'm... I don't 
think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do that. I one of the options is is I can run power from an outlet that's next to the closet into the closet and, and then put an outlet there and then I can have a little closet space for this switch. And if that happens, I will only need to run one cable from here through the ceiling. It'll be a gigabit over. There will be an uplink to this. And then my another project that I've got planned is a closed circuit su uh, security surveillance system that I'm going to put in. I'm right now running the Arlo cameras. I do not like that to keep changing batteries. So I'm going to go with a wired system. If, if I do go with that by moving an outlet into the closet and putting an outlet in myself, then that would greatly reduce the amount of cables I need to run from here. I would only need to run one ethernet cable up into the attic over to this switch and then I'm done. I mean, I won't have all the, all the cables for the attic camera system would be running out of that closet. And nobody would be seeing that. So now that I'm thinking about it, actually that's what I might do. So the next part of this video is going to be actually starting. Um, well, the next part is probably going to be installing that outlet and creating a comm closet up on the second floor. So, uh, so I have a place where I can put this stuff and keep it hidden. Be right back. Um, one thing about these access points is they are dual band, 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz, uh, 802.11ac, and running at uh, 1.167 gigabits per second, or 1167 megabits per second. So they're reliable, they're fast, they're aesthetically pleasing. When you mount them on the ceiling, they don't they don't look uh, awful, and they don't take up a lot of space. So it can be a conversation piece though. If people come in your house and we'll see that blue light up on the ceiling and what's going on. But uh, once you, you cannot be, you will not be de uh, disappointed. You will not be disappointed with a ubiquity product. I've never had been. So you'll like these. These are the uh, Unify Access Point AC Light. They have, they, have, they have a whole bunch of other different units, but these are, um, i trying to remember how much I paid. I think I paid 60 or $70, maybe $80 a piece for these. But uh, compared to some of the other ones, the reliability and, um, uh, reliability and dependability and the quality of product far uh, exceeds anything else and is definitely worth the price. All right, so there's the outlet that I'm gonna work with. This is gonna be my comm closet. And get a light. <coughs> my plan is to pigtail off of that outlet onto, to put a new outlet in right on this shelf, right inside this closet. This will house the security system and the switch it goes to the access points. Okay, here's the wall up in the attic. Right, kind of like uh, to the left of that white foam is where that outlet is. And then that wall right there is the closet. So I'm gonna pigtail off of that outlet, run Romex over to that wall, poke a hole through that wall and put an outlet in right there. Here's the spot right here, right above my office. I'll run that one Cat5 cable right across here, along this edge, back over there where that uh, vent is. Right on the other side of that is the wall where the closet is. All right, so this is where we're gonna do our power. And I'm also going to do all the connections for the security system. So I like these boxes because they're pretty easy. You just cut a hole that matches the size of the box and these fins hold it in place. Then I'll go all the way through the wall on the other side and run the Romex in.
Well, I'm gonna go all the way through. This box fits neatly right in there. As long as these tabs aren't done, they'll come, it'll come right out. So now I gotta go to the other side and run the Romex through so that I can run it into the box and put the outlet in. All right, there's our new outlet. Do a test, make sure it's good. That tells me it's got the correct wiring. Here's the outlet we pigtailed off of. And it's still good. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this outlet in. This is a four box gang box. And we're gonna use this to run our Cat5 and our power and video cable for the surveillance system. And there we have it. So what I plan on doing is I'm gonna be putting in um, banks of six. Six here, 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 and here of Keystone uh, wall plates. And so I'll have, because each camera has a um, BNC connector and a power connector. This will be three cameras, six cameras, nine cameras, and then 10 cameras. If I even install 10, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna wire it for that. So, if, you know, if we ever decide to move, somebody can increase the cameras if they want. The system comes with 10, so I might as well wire it for 10. And then I'll have four keystones left over for RJ45. One will be my uplink. And then there'll be three wireless access points. And then we'll have the switch sitting here and the CCTV DVR here. And then right here, I'm going to mount, or I might put up here, I'll mount the uh, monitor for the CCTV system. Okay, so I have all the camera and Cat5 cable through here, uh, ran through the box. I just got all bundles in the back of the wall because this is actually the easy part. The hard part is going to be running the cable uh, to the soffits to get to the cameras. So next I'm going to terminate all of them onto um, the Keystone ports. And um, after that, hook it up, uh, run the cables out to all the cameras that I got to run all over the house. That's going to be the fun part. Okay, so here's my uplink cable. It's above my office cabinets. I kind of ran. I'll show you in a second where I went through the attic, ran right along the wall through this uh, piece of crown molding, a little conduit, running it over where I have my Apple router stashed along with my Uma and my uh, cable modem. All right, so that's the back end of the wall where all the cable is that I ran before to the closet. Here's my, here's my Ethernet uplink port. Comes around there. Right over here is where the edge of the wall of my office is. <coughs> so what I did, so what I did was I poked a hole up from my office four inches away from the wall, right on the edge of the crown mold. The drywall underneath this insulation, I can see the nails, the finishing or the nails for the crown molding that nails it to the drywall. So then I measured how far I was from that spot that I made that hole to the wall. And I came up into the attic, I went through the insulation, found my hole that I made. I had stuck a coat hanger up through there. Measured that same distance from the coat hanger over to the spot here. I don't know if you can go down in there, but I then I measured a half an inch away from that stud, that header. And if you look in a little bit, I guess that insulation's in the way. There's the other header. Half an inch from both ends. That gives me room for drywall that's on the walls, drilled straight through there with a five inch spade bit and then all the way through the 
bottom edge of that crown molding and then ran my cable through there. So here is my little setup right now with my DVR and my PoE switch. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And now I gotta find out which ones of these ethernet cables is my uplink port. I didn't really pay attention. I'm not really concerned with finding out which one's which, because all I have to do is plug it in. So I'm looking for this port 16 over here. So let's, let's try this one. No link. Next. And that's our link. So now I have a hot um, uplink port. Move this cable up here. So now I have a hot uplink port. I can also plug in my DVR. port 15 and I had a bad power brick for the DVR so I've ordered a new one or contacted the company uh, and the new one was only four dollars on Amazon so I just ordered a new one if the company sends me one I'll have a spare but the power brick for the cameras is this one right here and it has one of these little cables on it. it has eight enough for eight cameras and then use the eighth port to come off on with this little one problem is each camera uses about a half amp that power supply right there is only three amps so that only gives me enough room for six cameras why I have no idea why the company would supply a um, power um, for cameras that only supports six cameras when the system came with 10 doesn't make any sense so when I get the new power supply it has five amps it's a five amp power supply I got to check the DVR and see so okay so the DVR is actually three amps so that power supply is actually for the DVR and the five amp is for the cameras I don't know why they had this one marked, I think, where is it, right here. Yeah, see this power supply is marked for six cameras. That makes no sense. So anyhow, that can come off and that can power the DVR. Since the DVR is 12 volts, six amps, that power supply should work fine. When I get the new power supply, that has five amps that will be able to supply all 10 cameras so it looks like we're ready to go to start running camera cables we now have an uplink to the switch and um, we should be able to run also our three um, wireless access points I'll show you how one of the problems is with this house is I have a second floor and I have to get cables to the other side of the house. I'll show you how I did that. So you see the little string here? It's wrapped around this door now. That little string goes up, up and over. I had to put a ladder up right here, climb up and then walk that string all the way across to the other side. Then what I'll do is I'll take that string and I'll take it around there. I have to take it up over the top over there, bundle it on the camera cables. I'm gonna run five camera cables and two ethernet cables from there over to this other spot where I'll show you.
Okay, here's the other side of the house. Here's my string with my little, my little uh, weight that I use to take it across. Just gonna leave that here for now. But if I go under, the string comes down right over here. On this on this side over here so if the string comes up through that corner right there because I've got a wireless access point that's gonna go right there in that hole I gotta get a camera that's gonna go back on that corner another camera that's gonna go in that corner and then back over there all the way back is the garage is the camera gonna be in that corner so I'm gonna to have to run probably about 120 foot cable all the way across and down through there, there, here, and then right back in that corner is where the front porch is. So I gotta run one there. So the other access point is gonna go right back over in there. So that's gonna be the hard part. Once I get the cable, all the way over here from the other side I have to get my wife to give me a hand she'll be uh she'll have she'll be happy to help with that because I'll need somebody to feed cable while I'm pulling it across ah she's all right with that she's cool so there we have our first wireless access point this is in the east room you can see that pretty blue color um, nice and aesthetically pleasing on the wall or up on the ceiling and that light blinks if you need to locate if you have a whole bunch of access points you can go into controller select the access point click locate and that light will blink okay so now we have one wireless access point installed in the east room take a note of the mac address ending in one alpha two five so if I start this, I'm averaging around a gig. Now that's on my Apple Airport Extreme router. So if I start walking towards the east, at that time, last time I think we did a test that dropped around 200 meg, maybe 100 meg. So here we dropped to 36 meg. Now we're climbing back up, 500 meg, 700 meg. Now you notice the MAC address didn't change. That's because I found out the app needs to be restarted. So if I drop the app and then run it again, now we have a new MAC. It's just something to do with this uh, Sweet, Sweet Spots app. So I'm running around 650, 700 meg. If I go back to this back room, or the back back part of the room, I'm still getting 250, 300 meg. That's pretty good, considering this room was, was getting very little on that wireless extender I had. Here I have 600 meg. So this right here is about where the TV, the bed, the iPads, and all that stuff are at. So four, five, six hundred meg here. It's not that bad at all. We come back. It seems like as you walk around with this thing, the signal drops, grows, data rate drops dramatically until you stop moving. Now I'm back in my office. So now I'm getting, there you go, 800 meg, now a gig. Notice I'm still it still shows the old Mac. So if I drop this, run this back again, now I'm on the new Mac. And you can see I'm a gig. So that's a lot better in performance now. I still have another one to install, but we're looking pretty good now. I still have two more to install actually.
Okay, so now I have two wireless access points set up. We already checked the one in the east room. Now we're gonna walk over to the west. This is where we completely lost connectivity last time. And you can see we're getting up to 700 megabits per second. If I go ahead and close this to change MAC addresses, you can see the MAC address changes. So now instead of having none or 20 or 30 megabits per second, we're basically down to I'm all the way in the far west corner, three or 400 meg. So that's pretty good, 500 meg. I'm walking back to the room or to the office. And you should see it jump right on up, boom. There we go. So I ran the cable over my attic and uh, I ran five camera cables and three ethernet cables because I already have one or actually two ethernet cables because on that side of the house I have the uplink and the cable for the east side of the house. The two cables are gonna be one for the west I'm going to put one more wireless access point on the north side of the house to cover the uh, patio area. So we're done with that. Next thing we got to do is um, the cameras. All right. I'm up in the attic. I ran another 100 feet of cable for the uh, video lines. And they are there. So, what I've done is I've already run a fish line over here. Uh, let's see. It's kind of hard to see, but that's this fish right here. So I'm gonna hook my cable to it and then run it back through. I have to make sure that I tape up this hook because I don't want it to grab any of those cables. Then I'll, this is above the uh, garage. So I'm gonna run, a cable, run some cable over here and then uh, I'll run it probably underneath that step. There's going to be a camera here, one way back in that corner, one over in that corner for the driveway. That's three of them on this side. Then I'll have to run. There's going to be one over there in that corner. But uh, let me get this cable run and then I'll show you. And there we have the first cable fished through. Pretty simple. That's my fish rods that I use. Um, I actually didn't video putting the fish rod up, but I'll do that on the next one. Okay, there's my next hole. Actually, it's the one on the right because the one on the left has a ceiling joist or a roof joist. So I'm going to have to patch that. But this one here will go up. Now you just got to remember because I'm in a corner that I'm going to have to run my fish up at this angle to get it up over the joist and in between the ceiling joist and the floor joist of the garage and then get it all the way over to where I can get to it. All right, so here is our, here's our fish cable. And then here's our, here's our cable for our, uh, get to it. 
need to make sure is that we hook it. Oh, well, hold on a second. So make sure we got to hook it and then tape it so that the hook doesn't get caught on any of those cables going back. Let me get my flashlight back in there. It's got to go right up in there. So, let me get this tape and I'll show you. There you go. So that's all we need is to make sure that that hook doesn't get caught on anything. And I'm gonna see if I can get this pushed back a little bit. I just gotta make sure and we have enough cable doesn't get caught on anything. We need about 10 feet. Yeah, so we got some extra cable down here. Some extra cable in there. And that's kind of dark. And then we're going to pull this up and down into there. Okay, here's our cable. Just start putting it, pulling it through. As uh, as we get it pulled through, we can disconnect, and then grab the next one. Try to be nice and gentle with it. Unscrew that one. These are only 36 inch. They make it pretty easy. Should be gentle and do this next one. Come on, come on. And here we go. We got it pulled. And here's our cake. first here we go okay so that's kind of like what I've got going on so far and that uses those keystone connectors which I'll show you here in a second I have one more to do I don't have the RJ 45 keystones in yet I'm waiting for them to come in but uh, I'll show you how these keystones work all right so here we have this. This is the Keystone um, port or part of the outlet that goes into the box. So here's here's a Keystone for the um, BNC connector for the video cable. So what you do is you come in from the back. You have a small ridge right there and then a connector with another ridge on that end so this is actually the back end and this is the outside which sticks out so what you do is you can tell on the on here this edge is what the actual wall plate uses so this is actually going to be sticking through that so what we do is stick it in the back of the connector along this edge for that first ridge and kind of push it down to a snaps in and then you have this that you squeeze and then you push until it snaps that's it and now you have that this is what I'm using for the uh, power cable and all I'm doing is pushing, I'll show you in a minute, I'm pushing the um, power adapter through that hole. I think I might apply a little bit of um, some adhesive on it along that octagon shaped lip right there to hold it in place because I don't want them, I don't want them falling back in. There was an option to do one that had um, an octagon uh, bolt 
that would go in there, they just cost too much. So I figured, why even why even put an adapter on there when I could just run the cable through it? So I'll show you that. But these are pretty difficult to put in when you have more than one next to it. So you fit it in with the uh, the ridge in, slide it in with the first ridge, and you gotta you gotta really fight it to get it into place. Maybe push on this back get this in a little bit they don't like to go in on a uh, wall wall plug that has more more than one so they, they do fight to get in the first one always seems to be the hardest <clears throat> tell it's not in all the way as it it's not flush a lot of times with these get this out they have these little whoops let's get find my camera they have these little um they have these little lips and if you're putting it in you might want to take the one that's closest to the other connector, take it off. So I'm just gonna use something to get that little piece off. I mean, that's not what holds it in. It kind of makes it flush. There, I kind of trimmed it off a little bit. Now let's see if we can get this in. There's one. Boy, this does not want to play. There it goes. Here we go. Now we got it nice and flat. So what we do now is here's my cable. Take that, screw it into the back. This one, I kind of got to, it just fits. And if it doesn't, I don't have a screwdriver up here, flathead. I just use a, a, a key. And all I'm doing is just taking a little bit off of that edge. Just a little. Now let's see if it'll slide in there. Just enough to get off that edge and then work it all the way up. Then, let's see if I can get this in the right position. We're going to have three, four cables that are going to be added to this. This is the uplink. Since I do not have the RJ45 connectors. I'm going to go ahead and just push the cables through. I'll show you this in a minute. I'm just going to get this through so I can restore the internet service up here.
because I just disconnected all my wireless access points. Come on, get through there. I'm not worried about the cable too much right now because I'm going to be redoing it once I uh, get this up. So let me split this around. So that's much. That's pretty much it. I got to just uh, screw these into place. And then once I get the um, these boxes are just plastic, so it doesn't really matter. I lost I lost the screws to this bottom one, but this screw will just go right through the plastic. I just need enough so that it'll mount it, and then. Uh, Then I'll go, then I'll put the cover plate on once I get the RJ45 connectors. But that's pretty much it. Once I have this all cleaned up, I'll have another, I'll take another picture or another video. Hooking up all the power connectors and the patch cables for all the BNC. And then I have patch cables for the Ethernet too. Okay. So here's what an Ethernet keystone looks like. This one you don't have to terminate your cable on. So, how this works, let's see if I can set something up here. All right, so, I'm just gonna pop this cable off of my uplink port. I gotta disconnect all my wireless access points, pull them out of the keystone block or for the wall plug and then that's this here and then all you do is you stick it in like you did the other one and snap it in and you pull out Three more. Three more. I'll put them all in here, too. Three. Four. There you go. So they'll look like that. Take my cables in the back, plug them into the back. I kind of want to go the east, put my uplink on the top. And then I'll put my wireless access points in the bottom. So there they are right there. Then I push all the cables back through the wall. Through the hole that's in the back of the wall. Line up my A screwdriver here. I'll show you what this looks like in a minute.
So that's basically what we got now. Nice and clean. I still got to do all the connections for the uh, security system, all the video cables. And this is the octal power cable that goes into all the red ports. And we'll be all done with that. We got we got to run cable. We got to run the cameras. Okay, so here you go. Final product. All the cables run. Got a monitor up here. Everything comes up like it should. There's my video surveillance. I ain't got no cameras hooked up yet. Nice and clean wiring. You gotta worry about a mess. Everything's tied up, velcroed together. Two PoE access points are on. I got one more to get. And 10 cables hooked up, patch cables. We're ready to roll. So you can see I've got four cameras installed. You know, this pretty much pretty clear video. These are these are like 3K cameras. That's pretty sharp. So I still got some more cameras to do, and then this project will be done. So what we want to do is we want to look at So we've added a um, we've added an access point. So now we want to go in and add it to our mesh. We already had two. We just added a third. So we start up the Unify controller, which controls all of the access points. Brings it up. Okay, so we have two. If we look at devices, we see we have two online and one that needs to be adopted. Um, if it's the first one, you won't have to adopt it. It'll adopt it automatically. The second one, you'll have to adopt and the third. So you go ahead and click adopt, brings it into your network. And if it is uh, needs to be up to date, once it comes in, it will go ahead and tell you that it needs to be upgraded. So we can see this little thing here it says stun communications failed. I don't have a stun server, so I'm not worried about it. So we'll go ahead and upgrade it because the other ones are on 3.9. This is on 3.7. Let's go ahead and upgrade it. Oh. Let's just go to config, give it an alias. We're going to call this WAP North or, yeah, North.
There we go. Now we got all three of them connected. Upgrades completed, all on the same version. Actually got clients that moved that were closer to that that went ahead and connected. Or actually, no, it moved down. It's uh, alphabetical order, I guess. So now I got it connected to the network. Once you save it, it'll queue the changes. You gotta go ahead and send it. Apply changes. Okay, so we got all three wireless access points in place. They're all three on the same network. They're all three have the same SSID, same passwords. That makes it a full mesh. So as I move around my house, everything I'll bounce from access point to access point or my main uh, or my main router.
Now you can go here and you can go to a map. So this is what I have now. And now I can add my new one right here. I can't, they won't let you add a router. So my router is about right here. So that pretty much should cover my whole house. Yep, that, that's my, uh, Apple router should be about about right here. That's pretty much it. All right, everything's wired up. Uh, I'm not sure one of my access points is showing. I think yellow means it's a hundred meg instead of a gig. Um, I probably just have to reset it or reboot it. And here I have seven cameras set up. I still have two more to do, but uh, you pretty much get the idea of what's going on and how everything's working. This is the DVR on the bottom. Here's my PoE switch. That 100 megs is for the DVR. It doesn't have a gig connection. Go figure that. But um, everything else is good to go. These are, like I said, I think they're 3K cameras. When you're at home, the system records at its highest resolution, whatever you had it set, whatever you have it set to. And um, but when you're away and you need to look at video over the internet, I think it drops to 720, so that. Uh, it's less data to push across the internet. But that's about it for this project. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them down below. Do me a favor, subscribe if you like it. If you don't, that's all right too. If you criticize it, let me know what you think. Y'all have a good one.